Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Kirsten's Corner. Today I'm going to be recommending five adult romances for newbies to the genre. So the five books that I'm going to be recommending today I have already read so I know from personal experience that these books are pretty great, pretty spectacular, and I think they would also be really good for people that are new to the genre. I think that they are definitely entertaining, you're not gonna get bored, they're also not too long, they're also very well liked, all of them. I didn't pick any polarizing books because if you're just getting into a genre, you definitely want to go in and find a book that you're gonna like. You don't want to find one that's polarizing because you don't want to get turned off from an entire genre just because of one book. Again, I've already said this, but these five books are traditionally published adult romance, so these aren't books full of like smut. They're not Penelope Douglas. They're not Colleen Hoover. They're very traditional books that you're gonna find in Barnes and Noble, they're nothing too intense. Like I said, I have read all of these books, I did enjoy all of these books, and I hope that you will as well. So without further ado, let's jump into the recommendations. So the first book that I'm gonna recommend is absolutely my favorite romance of all time, and that is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This is such a loved book that I would be surprised if you picked it up and didn't love it. This book follows the story of Alex, who is the first son of the United States, and Henry, who is the Prince of England. This is kind of a hate to friendship to love kind of story and it is spectacular. If you have some qualms about it being like too political, it is definitely not. We are focusing on two political figures, but it is not a political book, so do not let that deter you. One thing that I think is enjoyable about this book is that there is a tiny bit of mixed media. So for instance, we get some text message conversations and we get some emails, news stories scattered throughout, so it definitely keeps you interested because there are different spurts of multimedia throughout the book. Another great aspect of this book is the banter not only between the two main characters but also between the side characters. There are a slew of side characters in this book and I love them almost as much as I love the main characters. And a final fantastic aspect of this book is that as the characters are from different countries, we do jump back and forth and travel about the world quite a bit, which I always think adds to a story. So overall, Red, White, and Royal Blue is the number one romance that I would recommend you read, especially if you're first getting into the genre. Moving on to another widely loved romance, that is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I personally held out on this book for a very long time and I don't know why I did. Everyone was talking about how amazing it was and I didn't think that it would live up to that hype, but it did. This book follows the story of Lucy and Joshua who both work at the same publishing firm and there are two CEOs at this publishing firm and Joshua and Sally are the kind of secretaries for both of the CEOs so they work right next to each other all day long every day. Now that doesn't sound like much of a problem except for the fact that they hate each other with a passion. They fight every day, they do things to each other, kind of like Dwight and Jim in the office, if it got turned into a romance. And another thing that I really really love about The Hating Game is that while it is an office place romance, it feels like more than that. I personally tend to find office place romances a little bit boring and definitely repetitive because it just involves the two main characters characters going into work every single day, and sometimes that gets a little boring to me. So that is part of the reason that I kind of dragged my heels going into this. However, a lot of this book doesn't take place at the workplace. There are a lot of kind of excursions, team building activities, not at the company, and things like that. And then one final aspect of this book that really makes it a home run for me is that they are both vying for the same promotion. So there's definitely some animosity as far as that goes. Overall, this book was really funny, really sweet. You definitely grow to love both of the characters and kind of get to know their little quirks their weaknesses, their strengths, and it's super, super lovable. So I highly recommend The Hating Game. The next three books that I'm going to be talking about are all part of romantic trilogies, and that just means that there are three books set in this same universe, but you don't have to read them in any particular order. You can read them out of order, you can read them in publishing order, it doesn't really matter. And I also think that that would be really helpful for newbies to the genre, because if you find a writer or a character or 
a group of people that you like, I feel like it might be beneficial to be able to read multiple stories from that same world, kind of get your feet wet and then move on. So the first of those trilogies, if you will, is another wildly popular book, and that is Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. The other two books I'll have here, I haven't read them yet. They are Take a Hint, Danny Brown and Actor Age, Evie Brown, which hasn't come out yet. Get a Life, Chloe Brown was the first book published in this trilogy, and it follows the story of a girl named Chloe Brown. And Chloe has some chronic illnesses, which is a big plus of this book. There is a lot of representation for health issues that aren't necessarily represented typically in books and from what I've heard from reviewers with chronic illnesses it does a really really good job of portraying them. Chloe Brown basically has a near-death experience almost gets hit by a car and when that happens she realizes like hey if I had died like I haven't really lived my life so she makes a list of things that she wants to do throughout her life for instance enjoy a drunken night out, ride a motorbike, go camping, travel the world with nothing but hand luggage, and do something bad. We basically follow Chloe Brown as she moves into her new apartment because part of her list was that she wanted to like get her own place which she does but then she meets red who is like the apartment super and they at first don't get along but slowly but surely they crack down each other's walls and they fall in love and red helps chloe complete this list that she has made for herself and it is really really good i think it is a great romance to start with because it keeps you interested the entire time and it is also wildly loved there's not many people that disliked this book so I think it would be a fantastic place to start especially if you like it because you can read the other two books with the other two brown sisters. The next book is also part of a trilogy and that is Well Met by Jen DeLuca and the other two books I also don't have but I'll post them here. There is Well Played and there is also Well Matched. Well Matched hasn't come out yet so I don't know much about it but I'm sure it will be delightful. This book follows the story of a girl named Emily who for the summer is going to be living with her sister. She has to move in with her sister to kind of help her because her sister was recently in a car accident and like broke her leg. It's nothing like deadly or anything, but the sister can't really move around. So Emily is there to help her. And part of Emily's commitment is that she has to take her sister's place at the town's yearly Renaissance fair. Emily agrees to be like a bar wench all summer long at this fair that the town is putting on. When she starts going to the rehearsals for this fair, she meets Simon, who puts on the entire thing. And Simon is a grump and a half. He is never in a good mood. He just isn't happy. And Emily doesn't like him. They fight all the time. But again, they start breaking down each other's walls, they start getting to know each other, and they fall in love. What sets this book apart from other romance books is definitely the setting. Being at a renaissance fair every single day is spectacular. And another fun aspect is when Emily isn't working at the renaissance fair, she works at a little bookshop, which was so cute. I really loved the bookshop setting as well. And the next two books in this series follow side characters from this book. And of course, they're also at the Renaissance Fair because that is what makes this series special. I definitely highly, highly recommend this series. And the final book recommendation that I have, again, part of a trilogy, but I think this book is probably one of the most, if not the most unique adult romance that I've ever read. And that is the Bromance Book Club by Lissa K. Adams. I do also have the sequel, Undercover Bromance, and then there is a third one called Crazy Stupid Bromance that I don't have. I don't even think it's out yet, so that's probably why I don't have it. Overall, the Bromance Book Club series follows the story of these Major League Baseball players who have created a book club together where they read romance books to try to learn how to woo women, how to treat their partners like correctly and to be suave and romantic. And it is so sweet. Like it's these like buff, men, big baseball players reading, reading these books and it's spectacular and super unique. Another thing that I really loved, particularly about the Bromance Book Club, is the relationship itself is really different from other adult romances. 
This book actually follows a married couple and their relationship is really struggling. They're thinking about getting a divorce. They're having a really hard time having a relationship or at least having a successful one. And then the main male in this book, whose name is Gavin, gets brought into this bromance book club and he slowly tries to fix his relationship with his wife. And then as per usual in the adult romance series, the other two books follow different members of the baseball team and their relationships. It is super good though. Again, I liked this book because it wasn't really two people trying to get together. It was two people trying to fix like a really long relationship, which I thought was really special and definitely might be more relatable for romance readers. So just to go over the titles I talked about again, the five top romance books that I would recommend for romance newbies are The Hating Game by Sally Thorne, Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert, The Bromance Book Club by Lissa K. Adams, Well Met by Jen DeLuca, and Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. These books are just so delightful and so fun, fluffy, exciting, entertaining, and a really good entrance into the genre. So thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. I hope that you got some book recommendations from it. And if you do end up reading any of these books, or if you have already read some of these books, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you have any genres that you would want to see some recommendations from, also let me know because I have a lot of books I want to talk about and I would love to know what you guys want to hear about. If you don't already, it would mean the world if you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. And if you followed me on Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads so that you can keep up with me all the time. So until next time, happy reading. Bye!